Okay, so I couldn't just leave it as a 12, could I, when I got so near to the end. So let's see if I can actually complete it. Okay, so I'm back on this. Because I've edited it, I've realised that there is no way I can leave it just as a 12 when I'm so far on. So what I have done, I have created uh, the armhole frills. I've lined it with the pink, done it with the lilac that I'm going to have on top so that you just don't get the negative part of the, the unprinted bit. So we'll see how that goes and I've positioned you there so that you can see what's coming through the machine. Well, I don't know if you can see me or not. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you what I'm up to. So I'm just attaching the frill so that it should go that way. And I put the binding through the armhole. Watching the video of it, I just thought at the end, and I'd not finished it, I just thought, what a shame. It's not as good an ending as I'd like it to be. Because I don't want it to be a wasted thing. All the effort, a wasted thing. And yes, it's served its use as a toile. And I'm very pleased about that. And the changes that Delilah, simply Delilah, she lowered the neckline and did a few little tweaks here and there. And I thought, I'm really inspired to do that with some more silky kind of flowy fabrics. I'm just loosely attaching this because it's double. It's just a little bit less easy to control, so that's what I'm trying to do now. So I think it's going to be a flounce with a very capital F when it's done. Now, because I started the frill, as I do with a sleeve, I started to gather the frill at the notch. Now, I should have read the instructions and I can't find them now, so aha, they're right by me. Um, I'll look at them in a minute. But as I've only gathered it from there, to the other notch. I'm going to sew that down and if, if this needs gathering from the armhole to there I'll just do that separately. Now that is some statement sleeve. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> or maybe I should have just left it. <laughs> so that's what you call a statement sleeve. Statement ruffle. <laughs> a statement frill. If the wind blows, it'll go that way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that is the size of the pattern. Okay, it'll come in a bit. About a quarter of an inch, but that is it. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Sometimes you should just leave things alone. <laughs> now, there are a pair of ruffles to behold. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Initially, I sewed on the gathered frill onto the outside of the collar. But I used the collar piece that hadn't been interfaced and I was sure that that's what the pattern said and I kept checking and checking and it made no sense at all. Anyway, I did reread it one more time and I did have to take it all off and attach it to the side that's got the interfacing. But as you can see, the interfacing inside has gone a bit crinkly. I've moved all my um, bows on my flusible, flusible, my flusible fleece, my, flu <laughs> my fusible fleece and packing and stuffing and batting and things like that are in the bottom drawer. Um, they're quite easy to move about and get the ones I want even if they're at the bottom. All my mesh for the Biani projects are in that box. I have all my other stuff in the top drawer of a taller cabinet with my zips, etc. Drawer, I will show you what's in there at some point when I've finished twirling these, this blouse I'm making. Um, I will possibly get all that out and explain it to you. On the right hand side from where I'm stood is the... Um, just lots of pieces ready to make up those hearts. Scissor cases or organisers. 
and on the left under the bags that I've talked about before the white things I've got a lot of fat quarters all cut out and other cottons that are ready for washing and pressing before I put those away. Hi, so I've made some amendments just to these drawers in this cabinet just for now um, while I'm working out what to do. My biggest kind of heaviest pieces of fabric, well the ones that take up much room are in the lower drawer now. So the ones in the second basket are, they're the bigger pieces again um, and I like to have the opportunity to spread them out when I've washed and pressed them. Now most of those are jersey so it doesn't really matter but that's where I'm up to with that drawer. I've moved a turquoise one from somewhere else just to lay out flat. The main thing for me is when you wash them and then press them and then you go refold them. Um, not refold them. Yeah, if I fold them again to put in a smaller container, smaller drawer or a box or something, or roll them, then I've got to re-iron them when I start. I can't, I hate cutting out on crumpled fabric. You now when you realise you've made a lot of progress and you're really happy about it, and then you realise also, so in this little setup here, there is an unorganised mess and I need to have a look at this. <laughs> so that's what I will be doing later today. On the table I have the back cut out and sewn for the Bakerloo blouse. I'm working on the collar at the moment. Uh, I've moved some lilac fabric about as well. That's been pressed and um, it's gone a bit crumpled now so I need to sort that out and uh, put that back where it should be and I'm working on the collar I made a mistake on the first collar I can talk about that another time I'm doing the other half of it over there I did a race to the finish video for my so yellow forendo and then the day after I, I missed the deadline the day after I thought how cute or not would it look with frills if I did them so I cut out and I spent a, <laughs> a, a little while just um, lining that frill and then sewing it up. I'm still thinking about having it just as a twirl so that I can use it in some viscose. Mostly cleared up the floor and worked out what was in there. There were um, bits and pieces and then on the top shelf underneath is the bag that I usually have on display but I'm using that section at the moment and some alteration stuff. I need to alter two jumpers and a bra. If they're still living there in a fortnight, they'll go somewhere else because <laughs> they're not going to get done. And underneath, I've just got a bit more fabric. I've got it a bit more organised than it was, so that's that. And then I've got to get started now on doing some sewing this morning because I came in about 10 to 11 and now it's 12 o'clock. Now I found the frill not too dreadful to put on but um, you do two lines of gathering stitching as it explains and then you have a, a ruler of, a, it's just a piece of, a pattern piece that is your ruler to show that you're going to make it to that size. So then it's just a case of edging all the gathering out, trying to make it look equal, like it's obviously not equal there but then you get one bit less and then one bit more. <laughs> So I thought the easiest way is when I've got it so near now to what I actually need is just to lay it out with the tape there um, and so I can still keep moving a bits of it backwards and forwards and I'm not going too far off the mark if you understand what I mean. I'm sorry. I'm just not doing very well at explaining myself at all this. <laughs> this oh, I don't know at the moment. You know, on... Um, an idea we've had that I've got, with all the IKEA cardboard that was left from bringing a cupboard, <laughs> buying a cupboard, um, I've got Alan to cut it into, as if by magic, I've just they've just appeared on the table. He's cut it into boards which I can, or pieces of cardboard which fit in the shelf, and then I can put each item that I've cut out and got ready, all the pieces of it, I can put them on one board, and then I can stack them by board rather than having to fiddle about with bits of fabric from one dress and one article to another and all that. So let's see how that works. So I'm just going to create that um, potential order and see if it's going to work. Um, a pale pink um, 
Tilly and the Buttons Freya top or cut out a cowl neck Freya cut out. I've actually sewn the carcass and <laughs> the bodies together. I found a pleat that I've got that I've got to organise a dart for and uh, I can work out how to alter the pattern from that. So that's on one, one board. And just for this example, I've just put that on the bottom now. At the moment, I'm not in a rush for that. And then I'll put the other things on the other board. I'm not in a rush for this at all. I do have a dress in this fabric, which I love. But I do want to make the yasmin. Now, the bottom bit uh, with the salvage on, obviously, is what might seem like spare fabric, but that's for the deciding on which skirt I'm going to cut out from that fabric. And that's because I don't always use the pattern skirt for it and make an adaptation or a hack or whatever from another one. Okay, I've just found a little piece from the pink thing, so I'll put that back on that. I'm glad I'm going through it now, because actually I did decide which skirt I was using. It's probably the one that's from the 8875, the Simplicity. But the spare fabric is to decide what length of frill I'm going to put on the bottom of it. That's what that's for. And I had made a start on pinning the grown on facing for the v-neck well weeks and weeks ago it is a piece of lycra fabric that is to use as a stabilizer for the waistband and uh, i've got another one of those somewhere I haven't got the back band cut out so that's I've put the lycra fabric on there, that's why it must have been with it. See, this is the problem of leaving things such a long time, so I've just got to cut out the back band from that. Um, just hoping this... Um, the focus is a bit better. I just shot some and the focus was a bit blurry, but I'm just showing that now that's kind of a sandwich of the pink fray is under there, this flowery... Um, Sinclair Yasmin is on top, and then I'm going to put the other thing. This is the bodice, uh, or part of the bodice, for the orange dress from Deer and Doe. And I had realised, after I'd cut it, why I'd earth had I cut it now, because I'd done a twirl from just some cotton jersey and realised it wasn't quite stretchy enough just to get the eye, I don't know what you call it really, the blinking eye from the bodice. Um... Anyway, I've cut it now and I'll work with it and see how I go on. I also had I'd graded it and hadn't followed my grading line and cut into it on both sides. So, well, because it was folded. And so I've just put tape on so that I know about it. And then I'm going to work on whether it will still fit or not. And that's another of the mistakes I made. The bi they're binding pieces, really, to cover the... I don't know what to call it. It's an eye hole. Um, <laughs> it's, anyway, never mind. Bodice yoke, which sits over the top of the bodice, but with part of it bound, that needs binding, and the bodice yoke also, and the bodice itself needs binding. When I did it on the toile, there wasn't, it wasn't quite deep enough, so I added a quarter-inch on each side, top and bottom, of the binding. When I did do the twirl, I cut out the sleeves. I only had enough to make them about elbow length. And I did them on the largest size, and they were too puffy. They were too big on the arm side. So they would have been fine, but they're not meant to be gathered in. So I cut them the size that they should have been, or the size down, I'm not quite sure. and. But I did them long this time, which is what I wanted. But that's when I saw that actually they're not very wide. And I don't know if they will stretch to fit my um, my, my wrist. They should be okay at the bicep because I did measure that. But I've got to see. That's the yoke piece and the other piece of binding. And I put the back bodice on there. So again, I didn't, I didn't cut out the skirt. Fortunately, because I may have to do a big detour on this. Um... But I did make the length of the bodice just like the long top, just in case I only have it as a top. Now, already to me, this is feeling a lot more organised. I feel like the pieces are not going to be all curled up and also they're separate and it's I don't need to unfurl everything. Now, surprisingly, um, not being a royalist, I have 
found myself I'm going to make a um, Union Jack celebration bag for a friend and I'm very happy to do that um, but I just felt like I've got to do a full dis disclosure I have issues about the monarchy not supporting themselves but as a, a concept there there's lots of positives in my view but that doesn't match everyone else's um, okay just so that I can clear my table and also fulfill this experiment I've put all the Vogue blouse pattern on there. I wouldn't normally have put pins together, especially if it was all joined together, but it seems like a good idea as a separate, and I've got a few things. I just feel like I need to play at the moment and use my table for playing rather than being massively productive. I have the bodice of the um, twirl of the Bakerloo top which I did lower the bust arts and I think I've lowered them too much I'm not in the mood for trying on at the moment so I'm just leaving that there for now I don't think that I showed last time that I have got the um, eco viscose from Ga Guthrie <laughs> Guthrie and Garnet and I've put I've trained that as well with the boards I'm thinking this might be a good idea between large pieces of fabric as well, then I'm not hauling some out and dragging the others with them. I have other issue. I have other storage separateness for the smaller pieces. Uh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not much. Not so much that they're large pieces. It's that once I've ironed them, I don't want to have to keep creasing them up and rolling them up and storing them in a smaller container or on a board, rolled up on a board. Because I don't want the creases back in them. So this is a possibility at the moment. I'm aware that I may have shared this drawer set up before. Um, when I was doing some tidying up downstairs. When I had it downstairs, this desk. But I'm not quite sure. So I'll just put it in now. But these are those um, sets of boxes. Um, Organising boxes from Ikea. They're just cardboard. So they're recyclable. And I found it just a very handy drawer. Just under my sewer, my sewer locker. <laughs> my over locker. I've got the Bakerloo bodice in front of me. And I think I cut a size 14. Yes, I thought the bust darts were going to be quite low. The apex is a bit low. On the garment, on the pattern, it, you go straight across with the dart. I'm leaving the side seam... The depth at the side seam is fine. I just need to raise the apex, so I need to put an angle on the dart. So that's okay. And I think it comes in a little bit too far, so I'm going to just reduce that by half an inch as well. I need to size up on parts of it, but I, do, I can get it on and I can get it off. So I'm not too worried about it at this stage because it is only a twirl. So later today, I will be unpicking those seams and redoing those. I have tried on this little top and it actually does fit me. I'm not saying I would wear it, but it doesn't look as bad as you might think it looks on an almost 70-year-old woman. <laughs> so it's given me some ideas of just to lower the neckline a little bit and um, I think I need to grade out on parts of it, but other parts fit me quite well. And possibly layer the bodice, uh, lengthen the bodice a bit for the frills on. If I were to use something like that beautiful garden fabric from Guthrie Garney, something that's really slippy and smooth and fluid. Just see if there's any way I can rescue the cover from my iPad. So I'll just show you what I've done. But at the moment I've got, oh, what's it called? You stick it on. <laughs> I've ironed on some stuff you use for applique. It's called Heat and Bond. Sorry, the packet was downstairs and I just couldn't remember. One of the reasons that I'm not doing actual face-to-face -face videos at the moment over these last couple of weeks, I cannot get my words in order. I don't mean that there's anything drastically wrong with me, but it's um, there's something not quite right with me and I'm just... Um, I'm a bit late for menopausal explanations. But it's something I get now and again. And anyway, 
I'm going to try and fit this onto my iPad cover, stick it on. So it's not going to be simple because, um, and also I'm really sorry about my filming recently. I haven't got enough storage on my phone. I've still not sorted that out. And um, it just keeps letting me down anyway. There are bits that are folds on this that I would really appreciate being able to have some movement on. If not, I'll just make it as a cover that's a flat cover that as long as I can get this bit to bend where it attaches and the top flap to bend, I'll be all right. It means I can't just angle it to rest my iPad on and do some videoing. These were from a, two or three packs of fat quarters that um, were given to me. I hadn't actually chosen them, but I did I kind of had a good practice at putting together different ways of um, putting them together. Well, thank you for watching. On that note, bye for now. <laughs>